Welcome. In this video, we're going to learn about cells. Cells are the smallest unit that is considered living. If you look at organelles or molecules or atoms, those are non-living things that make up uh, cells and make up life. But the first unit that is considered living, and the smallest unit, is the cell. Humans discovered the cells uh, because of the use of microscopes and our observations with microscopes. You can't overemphasize the importance of the microscope and the development of that tool for advancing our understanding of life. It very quickly led to the development of the cell theory. Um, our observations with the microscope allowed us to develop this basic understanding of life, which we take for granted now, but was a big deal back when it was developed. So let's very quickly take a look at the cell theory here. The first part of the cell theory is all living things are made of cells. If something is not made of cells, it is not living. Viruses are a great example of that. They have some characteristics of living organisms, but they are not composed of cells, so they are not living things. Cells are also the basic units of structure and function of living things. So if you take a living organism, the structure of that living organism and all the functions that living organism is able to perform, the basic unit that's allowing this to happen is the cell. Now, the other third part of the cell theory is new cells are produced from existing cells. That means that all of the cells that exist in the biosphere today came from cells that existed before it. We can use our own bodies as an example of this. All of the trillions of cells that make up your body came from that first zygote cell, which came from two cells from your parents, the egg cell and the sperm cell, which came together during fertilization to make the zygote. So all of your cells came from cells that exist before it. All the other species um, operate under in the same way. What this part of the cell theory does not explain is where the first cell came from. It doesn't explain how the first cell came to exist in the biosphere. There are other theories and hypotheses about how that could have happened, but it's not part of this cell theory. Cells are uh, divided into two main groups. You have the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. Let's take a quick look at what prokaryotes are. We're going to start with them first because they were the first to exist and uh, in the biosphere and evolve in the biosphere. They are smaller and unicellular and the two bacteria kingdoms are the only kingdoms that are composed of these types of cells, these prokaryotic cells. There's no nucleus or other membrane bound organelles so they're smaller and less complex. They do have a cell membrane, they do have a cytoplasm, they do have ribosomes for protein synthesis um, but everything happens in that smaller less complex cell. DNA is not contained in a nucleus in a prokaryotic cell. It is in the cytoplasm. So there's no nucleus. That's the main difference. Now if we take a look at eukaryotic cells, these evolved from prokaryotic cells, and all of the other kingdoms of life um, are made of these more complex cells. The protists, the fungi, the plants, and the animals are all made of eukaryotic cells. They have a nucleus and other specialized organelles. They tend to be larger cells also um, and evolved from the eukaryotic cells. So let's take a quick look at a, a visual representation here of a prokaryotic cell. Uh, it has the cell membrane in the cytoplasm. The DNA would be in the cytoplasm there. All of the metabolic processes would be happening in the cytoplasm. And if you compare it to this other drawing of a eukaryotic cell, you notice it still has the cell membrane and the cytoplasm, but there are other specialized structures. Particularly it has a nucleus that contains the DNA for the cell and then other specialized organelles. In this case I have a Golgi apparatus and a mitochondria drawn, but there are many other um, specialized structures which we're going to learn about in another video. So how do you remember the difference between the two, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? Well, the way I remember it is I think of somebody 
pointing at me and saying you karyotic. So if you picture somebody saying you karyotic, that's because you are made of eukaryotic cells and you are a more complex multicellular organism. So the eukaryotic cells are the more complex type of cells. That means that prokaryotes, the other type of cell, are the bacteria cells, the less complex, smaller bacteria cells. I hope that was helpful.